Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 59 of SQL Server video series. In this video, we'll discuss about subqueries in SQL Server. Let's understand subqueries with an example. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. First, let's look at the tables that we'll be using to understand subqueries. TBL products table contains product related information like the ID of the product, which is also going to act as the primary key for this table, the name of the product, and its description. TBL product sales table contain product sales data. Every time we sell a product, an entry will be made into this table. This table contain information like ID, which is going to act as the primary key for this table, product ID, the ID of the product that we sold, at what unit price did we sell, and how much quantity did we sell. This insert script inserts some sample data into these two tables. I'll have this entire script on my blog so you can copy it from there and practice subqueries if required. Let's examine the sample data that we already have in this tables. So if you look at the data in TBL products table, there are three products with ID 1 to 3, TV laptops and desktops, and TBL products sales table contains sales data. Pay attention to this product ID column. Look at this, we have sold product with ID is equal to three, three times. That is, we sold desktops three times and laptops only once. And if you look at TVs, we haven't sold it at least once, okay? Now let's say your manager is asking you to write a query that returns the ID name and the description of all the products that we haven't sold at least once. Now how can we tell if we have went sold at least once a product? If you look at the product sales table, if the product ID is not present there, then we can say for sure we haven't sold that product at least once. Okay, so if we want to retrieve the ID name and description um, you know, of all the products that are not sold at least once, we want to retrieve all the products from this table where that ID does not exist in this column, in product ID column, in TBL product sales table. It's as simple as that. But how do we put that in a query? So first, let's write the select. What are the columns we want? We want ID, name, and description, but I'm going to do that later. First, I'm going to specify the from clause, so TBL products, and then I'll specify the columns in the select list because I'll get IntelliSense if I specify the from clause. And we want these three columns, ID, name, and description. Look at description it appears as a keyword. So I'm going to enclose that within, a square bra within square brackets. OK, so we want these three columns where the ID not in. So this ID that I'm going to select, the products that I'm going to select, the ID should not be within this column in this TBL product sales table. Okay, so how do I specify that? I can simply say select product ID from TBL product sales table. Okay, so we are selecting this product ID from TBL product sales table. Now if I execute this query, look at that. Look at what I get. I get 3233. Three, three. So I get all the product IDs. So instead of that, I can simply say distinct. So that will give me the distinct products that we have sold. Okay, so now we are saying select all the products where the ID not in 2 comma 3, which is going to give us uh, the row with ID is equal to 1, that's TV, which we haven't sold at least once. Look at that, how easy it, it was to use this sub query here. So the query that is present inside this parenthesis is called the sub query. Sub queries are always enclosed within parenthesis. And look at this sub query, it returns only one column. Okay, and this column is now used in your where clause. And we are using it in this not in. Okay, and subqueries are also called as inner queries. And the query, this query that contains this subquery is called as an outer query. Okay, now many times these subqueries can actually be very easily replaced with the joins. We have discussed about joins in the previous sessions of this SQL Server video series. If you haven't watched them, I would strongly encourage you to do so. We discussed about all the different types of joins that are available in SQL Server. We even discussed about advanced joins. So please watch joins first. So let's rewrite this query, you know, which gives us exactly the same output using joins. Okay, so how do we do that? Let me copy this instead of retyping. So select all those columns 
from a TBL products and I'm going to do an inner join. So when we do an inner join what happens we get all the matching rows between both the tables. So I'm going to join TBL products with TBL product sales table and how do we join them? In TBL products table we have the ID column which matches with product ID in TBL product sales table. Okay, now if I execute this query, we get all the matching rows between both the tables. Now I'm actually going to get an error. That's because in both the tables we have this ID column in TBL products and TBL product sales tables. That's why it's saying ambiguous column name. So we have to tell it from which column, uh, from which table we want it. So I'm going to specify the table prefix so that the query is not confused. Okay, so now if I execute this query, we get all the matching rows between both the tables. That's not what we want. We want to use a left join here. Okay, when I use a left join, I get all the matching rows between both the tables plus the non-matching row, which is TVs from the left table. But that's not what we want. What we want is only the non-matching rows from the left table. Okay, so we don't want the matching rows plus non-matching rows. We, I mean, we only want the non-matching rows. How do we specify that? Using a WHERE clause in TBL product sales. That product ID is now. That means it's going to return us the TV row. So we can easily you know, replace that with a join as well. So we are using a left outer join here with you know, this where clause, which is giving us the list of all products that we haven't sold at least once. Okay, so in this example, we have seen how to use a subquery within the where clause, and we have also seen how to replace that subquery using a join. Okay, both of these queries give us exactly the same output. Now let's look at another example of using subqueries. So write a query to retrieve the name and total quantity sold. Now let's say I want the name of the product. So if you look at these two tables that we have, I want the name of the product and the total quantity of each product that we have sold. So if you look at the quantity sold, how many laptops did we sell? Seven laptops. And how many desktops did we sell? Uh, nine plus four, 13 plus five, 18 uh, desktops we have sold. Okay, TVs we haven't sold any. So I want to retrieve the name of the products and total quantity we sold. And we want to do that using a subquery. Let's see how to do that. In this example, we have seen how to use a subquery in the where clause. In this example, we'll see how to use a subquery in the select list. Okay, so what do we want? We want the name of the product. So first, let me write from um, TBL products table. What we want, we want the name of the product and then what else we want? We want the total quantity that we have sold. Okay, so I'm going to use the sum aggregate function. Okay, but then I'm going to use a subquery. So anytime we want to use a subquery, the first thing we do is we open up and close a parenthesis. And within that, we write the subquery. So select, what do I want? I want sum of, so let's write, get rid of that sum. Sum of what do I want? I want quantity sold. So first, let me write the from class so that I'll get some IntelliSense there. So quantity sold. So sum of quantity sold from TBL products. And then we have to use a where clause where product ID, because we don't want the sum of all the products. We want to specify for which product you want. Okay. For now, I'm going to use the question mark. We'll fill this what, which is the product ID for which we want the sum of the quantity sold in just a bit. Okay, and then give this one an alias. So as QTY sold, quantity sold from TBL products. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, look at this. I have this TBL products from this table. I want the name and from this table, I want the total quantity sold. Okay, so but then when I select a product from this table, for example, when I select TV, I want to immediately come to this table for all those product which has got this TV, uh, you know, which is nothing but the ID, ID is one. So for all the products, you know, for all the products that has ID one, sum the quantity sold and then retrieve that. I have to specify that in this, you know, where clause. So how do I do that? Simply specify TBL products dot ID. So anytime you select a product, 
you know for example if I select this TV its ID is 1 it looks up that here and then if there is a match it is going to add the quantity sold and returns that as quantity sold okay so let's execute this query and see what we get look at that 7 laptops 18 desktops TVs we haven't sold any and then if you want to order that by product name we can simply say order by name of the product okay so here we are using a subquery inside a select statement in a select list okay let's see how to replace this again using a join again that's very easy to do okay so we have to know how to use group by and joins here so I'm gonna copy this query just to save some time in typing so select what do we want we want the name of the product and we want the total quantity so sum of quantity as total quantity or quantity sold from TBL products and I want to do a left join with TBL products sales table on this you know the join condition is the same and the important thing is we have to use group by because we want to group by name and then sum their quantities so group by name okay so we discussed about joins in the in the previous sessions of this video series so I'm not going to go into the details of joins now here so all I want to show here is um, you know we can replace subqueries with joins okay look at that I get the same output okay desktops 18 laptop 7 and TVs now similarly the same output here 187 null so most of the time the subqueries can be very easily replaced with joins okay so today we have seen how to use a subquery in the where clause and how to use a subquery in the select clause subqueries are always so what are subqueries from these examples it should be very clear that a subquery is simply a select statement that returns a single value and that can be nested inside a select update insert or delete statement we have seen how to nest a subquery inside a select list and inside the where class similarly we can um, you know have that in a delete or in an update statement or even in an insert statement it is also possible to nest subquery inside another subquery so here we have a subquery here this is the subquery okay now you have a where clause here so here you can have another subquery if you wish to okay so a subquery can contain another subquery that subquery can contain another subquery so this way we can nest subqueries up to 32 uh, levels according to MSDN and subqueries are always enclosed in parentheses and we have seen that and are also called as inner queries and the query that contain the subquery is called as outer query the columns from a table that is present only inside a subquery cannot be used in the select list of the outer query this is important again so we have the subquery here for example if you look at this one so this is a subquery now if you look at this TBL products sales table this up this table appears only within this subquery now if you look at the product sales table it has got other columns as well for example unit price that comes from TBL product sales table but this TBL product table a uh, sales table is present only inside this subquery in within the opening and closing of that parenthesis now can I use the columns from this table in the select list of the outer query can I use or can I try to retrieve unit price column from this TBL product sales table that appears only in a subquery no you cannot if you try to do that you get an error okay invalid column name unit price so the columns from a table that is present only inside a subquery cannot be used in the select list of the outer query now we have seen that we can achieve the same result either by using a subquery or a join okay so when we have these choices then what to choose for performance subqueries or joins okay we'll talk about the performance aspect in the next video session on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.